I want to welcome you to a, another episode of Searchers. Uh, we are back at the John Julius Lemoyne House. We have been having some incredible finds as, you, as you've seen in the, the previous two episodes. We found coins, we found buttons, we've been finding a ton of pottery. I mean, all kinds of different things that we've been locating. And uh, we're ready to find more. Uh, so today, uh, basically, we, um, we filmed two or three more times at the site. And today are some of the clips of some of the best finds that we had at the site. We're beginning to tell a story. We're starting to find features. We're starting to locate uh, items that are, that are tying the whole history of that site together. And so we hope you enjoy it and take a look at some of these incredible finds. So we've identified a couple cultural features out here. Um, and the first one is this foundation wall that you can see right here. We think that this is probably part of the original summer kitchen that was here because it appears to be laid right on the ground surface. Um, so we have this historic deposition on top and then right underneath is the old A horizon which was been the ground surface at one point. And it appears that these stones are just laid right on the ground surface and then they would have built the kitchen on top of it. But what's kind of even more interesting is the features that, that is next to it. Um, it's hard to see right now, but underneath this, it's filled with a bunch of stone. So it appears that maybe this could be a builder's trench where as they're you know laying this wall, they're knocking off pieces of, of the stone to help them fit. But above it was a layer that was just chocked full of artifacts. There was everything from large pieces of bone. There were uh, primarily all red earthenware, lead glaze with slip glaze decoration on it, which kind of makes us suspect that's more 1860s and prior. Um, but what that probably is, that, that layer in there right above uh, this possible builder's trench is the uh, the midden that was associated with the kitchen out here. So what they would have done, what a midden is, it's just a trash area. So they were probably just throwing all the stuff that they were using inside the kitchen, like right out the window, possibly. And it just begins to accumulate outside the building. All right, we have, uh, you know, guys here, you found something pretty interesting right here. We have, this is what they call um, green shell edged pearlware. And how you can tell that it's pearlware is that back here, you can see in the glaze, there's a bit of blue to it. You can see that kind of blue line. So where it puddles, you can actually start seeing that blue in it. Now, pearlware is, I think, anywhere from like the late 18, like late 18th century, I think like 1770s, I think somewhere in there, until I think like around 1840. But this is what they call the green edge shellware, of course, because it's got that green edge on it and it has this kind of shell look to it. Um, so that puts it, you know, terminal we're looking at at least in the 1840s, which is great because most of the stuff that's coming out of here we're finding is we're finding redware in association with this. We're not finding any stoneware, which would be 1860 on up to like 1900. So this is definitely showing that, you know, this portion and all these deposits that we're getting all these artifacts out of are, you know, prior to 1860. So pretty neat little piece. What do we think it's made out of, Brian? Let's take a look. Let's see here. Probably is going to be made out of, it's probably like copper or, or, you know, I would imagine copper. I don't know if they were made out of brass, but it was probably maybe silver washed at one point, but it's just tough to tell. I don't think it's, it's not iron. It looks like it's out of, you know, some kind of. Could be tin? I don't think it's tin. I don't think it's tin. It looks like it has a bit of green there. Okay. in that one spot um but you know we clean it up sometimes they get a little pattern in them sometimes if they're promotional ones which are more 19th century or more 20th century they'll have some kind of like some kind of auto shop or something like that you know they would have a little promo thing on it but um yeah we we'll clean it up we'll see what it is but look at all the charcoal inside that's it probably toss it in the fire probably see very cool nice find so I wanted to take this opportunity to catch something very rare, and that is Brian doing work. Look at him. Yeah, I know. I'm digging like a little animal. <laughs> like a small burrowing rodent. <laughs> Not just doing paperwork, but actually digging. Look at it. Look at him go. There you go. 
dig it's it like a little mole. <laughs> well, so <laughs> Pete almost lost his hand because Clay had to grab in yeah, so no. <laughs> forcefully because he's like silver coin. <laughs> Just because I did that to you earlier. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but um, it's not about who finds it as long as it gets found. <laughs> but what's the okay, so what we have here is a uh, it's called a barber dime because Barber was the guy that actually um, designed the coin. And on this on the back there will have one dime. And the date is 1906. Six. 1906 on it. But it's really worn. If you look at that, it's very worn. But here's here's the amazing thing. All three silver coins that we have found have come out of the same test unit. Um, and it's out of that little area that's there's a lot of red dog kind of on top and this dark soil underneath. So that could be the walkway that's coming in and out of there. So pretty interesting. What you have here, this is a little bit of almost like a convex button, but it's a flat button. Okay. Now if we clean it up a little bit, it doesn't, it doesn't look, oh, uh, one second. Okay, so it looks to be a uh, convex button. It'd be a flat button. Um, you can see the little post here on the back, which the, you know, the thread would have come through. But it doesn't look like there's any markings on the back. So that's going to put it pre-1800. So this is definitely like an 18th century button. So oh, that's wow. pretty cool. All right, so what'd you guys find here? Oh, it looks like an Indian head penny. Yeah, definitely. Let's take a look at it. So, yeah, you can see there. Definitely, there's there's the the Indian head on on the uh, the obverse, and on the back side, it would say well, I think one cent with a wreath around it. But I think we cleaned it up there a little bit, and we saw it was 1903. So, if I'm not mistaken, I think Indian heads go from. I think it's like the 1860s, somewhere in there, up to, I think 1909 was the last year for them. So I think that's where that, uh, the, the Lincoln sent, the VDB Lincoln, I think it's in a 1909 VDB, is the real important one, because that was the first year for them. But pretty cool find. So this must have worked its way down through floorboards or something, because we're still in that area where we're finding a lot earlier stuff. You know, we're still getting earthenware out of it. We're still getting those early pearl wares, or the pearl wares and the early white wares. So, this is really all right. So we have maybe the easiest <laughs> find ever. So wait, we have to show what happened. So here we are. Clay's like, I'm like, you know, we're gonna dig down to. He's like, yeah, and I'm like, yeah, right here. Dig down to this stuff. You see where it breaks off right at the black. So I went up here. <laughs> He plays the shovel and he goes, oh my God, like, so coin just popped out. <laughs> so, so what is, I mean, we started to look at it and then we like, no, 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 we got to film it. So we already I'm know not, it's, it says Liberty on it. Yeah. As we think. Definitely says Liberty. I mean, uh, I'm thinking it's a large scent, but let's see. But here's the neat thing. Look, look it's hold. It's, the old man has to put his glasses exactly. on. Exactly. It's hold. Right there's the hole in it. So, so meaning someone was wearing it. Or actually, no, they would hold money because... You put this on a string, you're uh -huh. not gonna lose it. Oh, okay. So that's that's what I've heard too. Yeah, people can wear them too, but I've heard the same thing too. So let's see, it's it's a large, oh my gosh, look at how nice that's cleaning up. Look at that, it's a one cent. That's what I figured, so this is probably gonna be, it's a large cent. Got a little bit of a... Uh... A little bit, but the other side, where it has the date, is the one that looks kind of roached. Is it pretty jacked? All right, so let's see. Oh. oh. What is that? Okay, so there's Liberty. So we know it's 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 going to be. Hang on, hold, hold it just for a second. There, oh here we go. Turn it this way. Right there it is. You can start seeing it coming through. And of course, they I think they popped it right almost where the date's at. But there's I think that is. I think it's a matron head. I think I'd have to look and see. So that would be. Uh... Oh, here we go. We got we got a date coming through. There's a three. 1830s could be I yeah I matron think. head 1830s I'm thinking I mean they had to pop it right where the date was at oh oh you can see the head coming up yeah yeah see the head hurt let's do this let's just get a little bit of love on <laughs> or drop it you know just get a little love down there I can't believe that <laughs> that is <laughs> that is hilarious so it was definitely sitting up the head okay because of all the all the okay
Thanks, Jack, looking on the front. Oh, yeah. Right here's where the date's at. The figures. Oh, I can see it coming. 18, it's something three. So 1830s. That'd be about right for the matron head, right? It would be. Now, it might be 1833. 33, okay. It might be 33. You know, and I don't think we have a magnifying glass or anything with this to really look at it. Right. And there's like a piece of sconge right where the where the, the uh, ten year would be. Or no, it's a two. No, it's a three. I think it's probably 1833. If you can see, right down here is where the date would be. Okay. Maybe you can zoom in and see it. Can't see it now. No. Nah. That's awesome. <laughs> That'll what be the only thing we that? find today. And look, they punched it from this side. You could tell right here they punched because here's where all the metal on yeah. the other side. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> just right there. It fell. I mean, whoever was digging this hole last time, like they inches. missed. They missed a large scent by. Well, and well, there's there's some pottery. Yep. So right here, right here is where we found the three silver dimes. Yeah. And there's some pottery coming out. And there's already. some pottery popping out. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right, well, that was uh, two minutes in. Two minutes in, and we're like, oh, it's going to be cold today. I hope we find something. <laughs> and we were going, should we dig here? Should we dig there? <laughs> right we're on like, the damn corner. There. Let's go this way. <laughs> Doug was here. Doug was digging that. I feel so bad. Doug has not found a coin yet, and he was this far. Well, Doug should have been out here this morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we'll keep going and see what we find. So we started cutting into that corner again. We, we took all this garbage off the top, started into that corner again, and pottery started flying out. And I reached down thinking that there was a piece of pottery because there was white on top, and we've got another coin. So I'm going to flip around here, Brian. So what do we... Oh, I'm going to fall down too. What do we got? Well, it is... It's very smooth. Um, and it's pretty thin. So if I had to guess, it's going to be probably an English coin. But copper, though. It's copper, but let's take a look at something. Let's just compare it. Oh, size-wise. Yeah, size-wise. Could it have been it's smashed? Smaller. Is that why it's... Nah, see, it's smaller. So, I'm trying to think of my English coins. But there's, I don't know if that's like a farthing, maybe? But we can look at the diameter. And if you measure the diameter, you can get an idea of what it is. But for date-wise, it's going to be tough. There's just there's nothing, there's nothing on it. There's nothing on it. But a lot of times, that's what you get with English coins. God, that's smooth. There's like, you can't even see any, any edge detail. Sometimes you'll get... So that was almost the exact same spot. It's got that same yeah, it's, schmutz it's on it. Yeah, that same stuff on top. What is it? I can't see any markings on it. Oh, we're just not going to get anything off of it. But that's awesome. Definitely. I mean, it's seriously. So we're the. All, I mean, we're here. It was in that here. Crazy. I mean, this is how much space we found. That coin. The first coin was there. That other one was somewhere in here. And there's just pottery littering this now. Wow. That's crazy. That's awesome. So you found a tom back button. So if you look at it. You see it has that little bit of a pyramid kind of look to it in the center? Yeah. So it's kind of spun. That's how you get that. And they're usually a little more, have like a, they look kind of like a silver finish to them a little bit. On the back, you don't see it better there. Yeah. But that's, you know, that's in pretty good condition because typically the uh, the loops are always bent or broke off. How old is it? So this would be an 18th century button. Now, it's made in the 18th century, but, you know, we're looking at a place that's 1826. So obviously they're going to have probably buttons from that, you know. But great fine. So those really were amazing. Uh, the things that we found, we were blown away uh, by what was turning up. And there's more. Uh, there's more footage that I didn't use for this episode. I'm going to use for another one. And we plan on going back and actually filming some more. Uh, so just an incredibly rich site. We're just really excited to see what else turns up. And what else can add to the story that we're starting to put together of the history of that site? Now, normally, um, at the end of episodes, we like to end on a happy note 
and uh, you know we have some funny credits that roll or, or whatever it may be. Uh, today is going to be a little bit different. Uh, unfortunately, um, the uh, the last clip that you saw of uh, of Janet Lane of Dr. Janet Lane finding the button. Unfortunately, uh, not long after filming that, Janet very unexpectedly passed away. And uh, Janet was an incredible lady. Uh, so she served on the Historical Society board for a total of 13 years, uh, serving as member at large, secretary, vice president, president uh, for two different terms. She was the beginning of change here at the Historical Society. Uh, sh she brought a different mentality uh, to, to the board of directors that we could be more than what we were, that we didn't have to just be a house museum with a, with a, with a nice collection, that we could do more. Uh, and so she changed the environment on the board. She brought this, this attitude of, of striving and reaching for better and, and, and growing the organization. And she was the beginning of that with a handful of other people. Um, even after retiring from our board of directors, she continued to serve as a volunteer. Uh, if you uh, drove past the house and you saw, you know, the beautiful flowers in the entryway to the, uh, to the home, that was Janet. If you went to Art in the Garden or Spirits in the Garden or our Hall of Fame award banquet and saw centerpieces and decorations around, that was Janet. Uh, she was always trying to raise the profile of the historical society and give a welcoming feel uh, to the building when people walked in. Um, she recently, you know, became an important member of our collection staff as we are going through the transition of building our new museum, which she's a major reason why that's possible. Um, she became an important part of our collection staff in uh, cataloging items that we had here and uh, was, uh, was also editing our newsletter. So she was a big part of what we were doing even after stepping off the board. Um, for me personally, Janet was one of a few people that I would turn to for advice, for ideas, for... Um, sometimes just for assurances uh, that what I was doing was right. And she always was there. She always had an incredibly kind word. If you watch laid back history, you watch searchers, you know that there's going to be a comment from Janet every episode uh, saying how great we're doing and how much she appreciates it. And it really hit home, um, hit home last week when we aired the new episode of Laid Back History, and, and there was no comment from Janet. Um, I personally, I'm gonna miss her, and I will feel her loss. Janet was so much more than a board member and a volunteer. Um, she was a part of our family here at the Historical Society. Um, she's, God, God, she's gonna be missed. Uh, we're all going to feel it. Uh, you know, people that knew her well, people that knew her just as a board member, people that saw her just as a volunteer, everyone's going to miss it because there's going to be something missing from our family forever. But she will live on. She's going to live on in our hearts and our memories. But we're going to miss her. Yeah, we're gonna piss her.